What is up guys, this is T2 back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Experience Plus ROM based on Android 13. This is the 28th January 2023 build and it comes with different versions. The regular version does not include any customization as such but of course both include Z apps and I have flashed the Plus edition because it has a little bit of customization. Now let me tell you I have also tried this Sear Droid ROM earlier but I could not simply get it working because with this Sear Droid ROM with the normal Z apps that I have tried I could not simply restore my Google app beta backup then I tried the stock kind of G apps from the Nick G apps which is mentioned over here but even flashing that was not working for me it was simply force closing the home screen or the stock launcher so that's why I have switched to the pixel experience from and I tried it so here is my review about the latest pixel experience plus from and the Android version is of course Android 13. The security patch over here is of January 5th 2023 as this is a January build not February build yet and we have the Soviet star kernel as the stock kernel. In the system panel we have a system updater from here you can check for updates by the way if you want to flash this from on your device yes the flashing guide will be present in the description you should not worry about it. And in the status bar settings we have the network traffic indicator and we have the system icons from where you can enable this headset bluetooth etc kind of icons and we have this show low priority notification icons and stuff then we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and we have this clock position changing option from left to right or center and we have the show seconds in pm style changing option even the battery style options are there even the percentage of the battery you can change the brightness slider auto brightness and the brightness control by sliding across the status bar is there and the quick pull down is there we can choose it from right left or just turn it off let me go back in the button section we have the system nav gestures in the settings of it we have this edge long swipe action you can control it between these many options gesture indicator swipe to invoke a and stuff everything is working fine but there is no pill bar thickness or the length customization but you can control the edge touch area let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations as well and the edge long swipe action is here again and we have this press and hold power button action you have the advanced restart option right here and even there is the menu shortcuts i think you can customize it between device controls and stuff you can enable those if you want and we have the quick torch this is the power button toggle torch you can have it automatically turn off if you want then we have this end call and the wake device control playback and stuff everything is present now in the gesture settings we have this quick open camera and stuff then we have the system navigation gestures one handed mode is there and you can customize it for the notification panel as well. Then we have this long press on fingerprint sensor to unlock device but even if you turn it on it is not enabling as you can see I'm turning it on and going back it's still not enabled. No idea why but yeah that's how it is. I have the pickup gesture enabled by the way if you are wondering. Also there is a swipe direct screenshot I have also enabled that and that is actually working fine you can go into the edit section so you can make a doodle or something if you want just like this. So yeah you can do all of these things. And you can delete the screenshot or share it if you want and we have the pop-up camera settings from here you can disable the sound effects or you can enable any other sound effects for the motorized front camera that's pretty much it about the system settings now one thing i have to mention over here that in the display settings there is no deceiving i could not simply find it that's why sometimes you may notice the display is flickering a little bit so that's how it is even in the display settings i could not simply find the anti-flicker or the disenaming mode. There is no outdoor bright sun mode and stuff which you get with other ROMs like the Evolution X ROM. But let me show you the home screen. Well this has a stock launcher as the pixel launcher and this is how it looks like. To the left of the launcher we get the Google's Discover page and they are pretty smooth and of course the display is not running at like 100 hertz or 90 hertz all those things are simply missing this display is running at 60 hertz right out of the box and there is no overclocking option for the display on this particular ROM as this is a pixel experience so yeah and swiping up on the like stock launcher will get you to the app drawer you can search for any particular app swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel i'll show you that later but first let me show you the widgets yes they are working fine if you're noticing this clock widget and the animations of opening and closing it is working perfectly fine now here even the battery widget is working perfectly fine you can tap here to go into the phone's battery and you can tap here to go into the headphones settings the battery settings and stuff and even the weather shows up just like this you can add these widgets if you want all the android 13 widget should be working fine here talking about the quick setting panel let me show you in the edit section we have these many toggles i'll show you the toggles that i have added but yeah these are the extra toggles that you get one more thing i have to mention about the quick setting panel is that even in the light theme the quick setting panel stays dark like this now on top you get the brightness slider and we have this auto brightness button right here then we have the wi-fi mobile data bluetooth icon and stuff and if you tap and hold on it it will go into the bluetooth settings directly and we have the flashlight, dark theme and the auto rotate night light always on display toggling on or off option. 
there is no charging only option for the always on display here now we have the hotspot the screen recording and stuff and from here you can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time if you want the battery saver is there do not disturb and the google home controls and the data saver 100 mode ambient display is turned on airplane mode the heads up and the nearby share that's pretty much it again there is no anti flicker or the fps info seeing option all those things are simply missing here now let's talk about the stock camera well you get a aperture camera present by default which is the line us kind of camera it works fine like even with the front camera and stuff it works great it's not a issue but yeah i did not simply like this particular camera to be present by default that's why i have installed a gcam this is a ngc version i'll link it below in the description and i'll show you some samples on the left and right side of the screen so that you can get an idea about the picture quality but overall with this this is an amazing experience right out of the box you get this lens switching option and there is the 0.66x or ultra wide angle lens it is working fine this is the main sensor you can see i'm covering this like middle lens over here it is covering that and right now if i switch to 2x as you can see this is also working fine and it is a separate lens which is this one so if i cover the top part of the lens as you can see right now it has been covered if you want to shoot night side pictures of course there is the option you can shoot with all the lenses like the front camera and stuff should be working fine too with the night side mode you should not worry about that now in here in the video settings we have the full hd 60 fps option even the 4k 60 fps option should be working fine as you can see right now we are on the 4k 60 but there is also a 8k option which supposedly will be working on the newer devices but over here it won't be working of course the k20 pro does not have 8k support so even if you switch to the 24 fps it won't support 8k so yeah it doesn't force close or something it just doesn't switch to that you can of course shoot up to 4k 60 fps with this z cam and again i'll link it below in the description you can also switch the mics and stuff if you want so right now it's this phone mic i can definitely switch to the bluetooth mic if i want to shoot or like record the audio from that and one thing about this camera i have to mention i really like this the zooming option the normal zooming option 1x 2x you can switch just like this also if you slide a finger just like this as you can see you can zoom up to 10x so yeah this is great that we have all these fancy looking zooming option like a pixel device so i'd say it's a very fast experience of taking pictures wherever or whenever you want and i've talked about the cameras now let's jump into the settings let me show you the battery settings this is how it looks like no battery temperature no charging cycle you cannot simply see all of those we only have this turn on the light when charging this is for the notification led on the front camera and here let me talk about the battery life i have got about eight hours of screen on time you can say seven hours and 45 minutes here it shows so yeah you will get definitely good enough battery life if your battery's health is good i have a new battery even the screen off you can see it's about 12 days that's a huge amount of number for standby time and even the combined use is more than three days that's again a huge number and in the health section for me it shows as 92 percent and the fast charging and stuff should be working perfectly fine here you should not worry about it let me show you the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like and you can control the media call ring etc volume controls by the way this is how the volume panel looks like you can expand the volume panel just like this and you can just switch the output device from right here and we have the smart pause adaptive sound vibration and haptics if you scroll down more we have the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound and vibration and we have the vibrate to indicate call status and even the me sound enhancer you can enable from right here and you can choose to the youth edition or you can even go with this me earphone basic and stuff then we have this other preset choosing option and the enable hi-fi option is also there now the sound quality with the headphone jack and bluetooth and the speakers and stuff is amazing you should not worry about sound quality on this particular rom now in the display settings we have this brightness level adaptive brightness and stuff and in here we have this one shot auto brightness too and in the lock screen we have this privacy controls then if you scroll down more we have this display media cover art show device controls this is for the google home controls even from lock device you can do always show time info is the always on display and we have this wake screen for notification and you can turn it off i guess and if we scroll down more we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes the dark theme you can enable in the display size and text you can customize this if you want and in the live display i have already showed you we only have this color calibration there is no outdoor bright sun mode if you need that and we have this reading mode option if you want to enable that and the colors you consider to boosted or natural if you scroll down more we have the auto red screen the 180 degree screen rotation and stuff if you want double tap to wake double tap to sleep and even the wake up on plug is there now in the ambient display there is the pickup option that works perfectly fine i'll show you that while i'll show you the thing which can speed and stuff next let me show you the wallpapers and styles and in here 
we have this change wallpaper option and you will definitely get these pixel kind of wallpapers like the feathers come live living universe and stuff and the art cityscape etc options but let me tell you i have been using a fresh walls app wallpaper i list the apps which i use for wallpapers in the description and again we have this wallpaper colors and the basic colors up to 16 options for each of them and we have the dark theme the themed icons and the upgrade we have up to 5 by 5. in the settings of the lock screen kind of stuff we have this lock screen after timeout and we have this power button instantly locks option and the scramble pin layout but there is no quick unlock option over here and in the more settings we do not get any kind of app lock which is kind of disappointing for me at least and in here in the face unlock we have this when swiping up on lock screen so i'll choose that right now let me just do the double tap to sleep and right now if i just tap the fingerprint scanner it's not unlocking let me just double tap okay so sometimes as you can see it's not unlocking so this problem i have faced i have the pickup option enabled by the way let me just show you that and here if i just pick the device on my hand and just tap the fingerprint scanner then it unlocks perfectly fine now what i'll do in the ambient display i'll just turn off the pickup option and i'll just disable the ambient display right now if i just do this as you can see right now it is working perfectly fine so without the pickup gesture the unlocking with the screen of fod is working perfectly fine but otherwise it may be a little bit weird as you can see it is working fine but it won't affect you in the daily driving because if you have the pickup option enabled whenever you pick up the device on your hand it will wake the screen in the ambient display then you can simply unlock the device without any worries but also the screen of FOD without that is working perfectly fine now let me show you with the always on display now this is how the always on display looks like it looks beautiful and even if you double tap to wake this is how the lock screen will look like and even from the always on display the fingerprint scanner should be working fine so it did not work for once whenever i say that it doesn't work but here right now let me show you yeah it is working fine and the animation definitely looks beautiful from up close let me show you right now it's time that i show you the face unlock and for that i have to just swipe up and it shows recognizing face and as you can see it has unlocked let me try one more time I just swipe up shows recognizing face and it unlocks so face unlock is not a problem but then again we do not have any kind of app lock on this particular rom Talking about basic things, yes, safety net does pass over here right out of the box, so you should not worry about it. You can use banking apps without any worries. Even the DRM info shows as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And of course, this ROM has the Google Photos Unlimited backup, so you should not worry about it. Now, let's talk about the overall experience of the whole UI's performance. Well, I would say, yes, the display is running at 60Hz, which is a bummer nowadays for the K20 Pro because all the other ROMs like the Evolution X ROM has up to 100Hz, which will give you much, much better experience. If not, you will get a decent position with the 72 hertz and stuff. But here, you only get 60 hertz. That's definitely a bummer in my frank opinion, but your opinion may vary. You will get the ANX camera and stuff in the Evolution X ROM, but here you won't get that. You will get a aperture camera, which is not that good. You have to install or survive with a Gcam with this one. And also, let me show you the Twitter scrolling. Yes, the Twitter scrolling and stuff is perfectly fine. You should not worry about it much, I would say. So yeah, overall, I would say the daily driving experience, if you want just a stock Android experience, this will definitely give you a decent experience. It's not bad at all, but yes, there is no customization and stuff like not huge customizations. You won't find good amount of customizations on this ROM. So that's pretty much what you get. You get a stock Android experience and that's pretty much it. If you like the latest Pixel Experience Plus ROM on the Redmi Q20 Pro, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video to your friends if you want them to know about the latest build of the Pixel Experience Plus. How is it working on the Redmi K20 Pro? And subscribe to the channel if you have not yet, guys. This is Tito from K20 Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.